right. What's up, worldwide family? Uh, here I am, Jimmy Fliss, back at it again. The uh, I want to I want to thank y'all for showing back up. Uh, let's see if we can pan over just a little bit, and, and we we've done a little a little something since uh, since I seen y'all last. Bear in mind that's that's starting in the floor, guys. Uh, it's not uh, definitely not a the fullest it's ever been. It's not the full back of the truck, uh, but it's a nice little. It goes all the way from one side to the other. It's a decent haul. Uh, that being said, I uh, for y'all that are catching up, I am coming back from Crystal Beach. Vacation is not over. Uh, however, Crystal Beach is. Uh, Thank y'all for joining me again. For those that are new, uh, welcome to my channel. Uh, the name of the channel is Jamestown Trading Company. I, uh, I am a domestic arbitrage merchant. I like that term. Uh, y'all may get tired of hearing it, but I don't get tired of saying it. Uh, that basically means, in a nutshell, I am a reseller. I, uh, I sell on uh, eBay, predominantly, Amazon. I have my own website, www.jamestowntrading.com, not Jamestown Trading Company. That one wasn't available, uh, but nobody else is using it either. They wanted to charge me for that. I wasn't paying. I mean, I pay for the site, but I wasn't paying extra for the name. So uh, that being said, maybe I should have, maybe I will down the road, uh, but www.jamestowntrading.com. Uh, I have thought about a uh, special uh, coupon code for the people on YouTube. However, um, and, and I think that's going to be beneficial and, and that will start uh, probably after I get back to the house. But for the time being, y'all can, I do have an active coupon code uh, and it is Jimmy's, J-I-M-M-Y apostrophe S space VIP and that's good for 10% off of my website that's not on eBay that's not on Amazon that's on www.jamestowntrading.com all right moving along uh, uh, let me see um, I am heading back uh, from Crystal Beach and I have hit probably at least 10 targets and uh, one Walmart we are now after 10 o'clock, so the stores are now closed, or I, um, I would have uh, kept going. My wife asked me earlier why it takes me 13, 14 hours to, uh, to make a six hour drive, and all I could say was, well, you know, uh, there, there are stores on the way, and I haven't been shopping, I mean working in a while uh, so uh, I had some catching up to do uh, so here we are right and this is this is pretty darn good uh, I, I, y'all aren't getting the full benefit of this uh, but at any rate it, it, it's nice uh, the things that I bought the items should be about anywhere from 50 to 100 percent ROI uh, I got a tip off of YouTube. Uh, might as well go ahead and shout them out. Although I don't talk to them, um, and, and that's not a... Anyway, it, it, it's not like a friend of mine. It's just somebody I saw on YouTube. That's a good way of putting it. Uh, Richie Hustles. I mentioned some deals going on in, um, in Target, so I figured I'd check them out. That being said, the... Um, it brings up a topic in mind. Y'all have probably already guessed it because I had to write it for a title. Uh, something to the effect of uh, supply versus demand. You know, I know a lot of new resellers uh, that get comfortable with checking comps or Keepa or, or whatever, Scalify, I don't use that one. Not that it's not worth using, I just haven't 
had any experience with it. You know, they check the, these numbers and it shows what things have sold for. Uh, it also shows um, how many have sold within a certain amount of time. You know, if you look on eBay, uh, the sold comps will show you how much it uh, generally, unless they received an offer and it doesn't always tell you the offer, but it, uh, they tell you how much it has sold for and how many have sold in the last 90 days. And that, that's huge data. You know, uh, although I, um, I do have Kipa, I haven't really got into using it that much. I do take a look to look at uh, a couple indicators of whether or not I will get an intellectual, um, uh, what do they call that, intellectual property complaint. Uh, basically on eBay it's called a bureau. Uh, I have been told that there's certain characteristics of the sales line to avoid and I, I do use it for that. Uh, now, uh, that brings me to, that, that shows you how much it's sold for and how many are selling in a given time. What it doesn't tell you, now, and to my knowledge, Keepa, Scottify, all of those uh, don't tell you what it's going to sell for. And I don't know if I mentioned the title or whether I, I walked around it, but it's basically something to the effect of supply and demand and how that affects us as uh, eBay and Amazon merchants. You know, and, and in all honesty, that's how, a, that's the reason for intellectual property complaints is because uh, supply and demand also uh, affects the, the people that own the rights to the, the property that they have. You know, I have uh, been sent a cease and desist letter one time uh, from one company because I was I had sold their brand, sold past tense, uh, and luckily sold through. At any rate, and they mentioned dilution of brand. You know, um, and, and that is a direct result of, of supply and demand. You know, I have personally witnessed things that you could buy in the store for $100, new, retail, but when they stopped selling in the store, the prices went up to $250, uh, $265 even. Uh, because, and I say stopped, I, I don't mean period, or I never would have got my hands on them, but I, I mean they, they started selling out, and the prices skyrocketed up to you know, 265 in, in the eBay and Amazon. I believe some people call that the gray markets. Now, I don't, I don't know. I, I may be completely messing up that term. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, things that started out at 100 in, in the store and then as supply uh, became less and less and it became harder to get a hold of, those prices went up to 250, 265. Uh, I got a hold on this particular SKU of eight of those items and I got them at $40 a piece on clearance. And uh, anyway, within a couple days, matter of fact, overnight it took a huge drop. And within a couple days, that $40 item that takes $35 to ship all the way across the country, cheaper if they're closer, but $35 to, to ship all the way across the country, uh, was going for literally 40 bucks free shipping and that's because there was 40 selling in a 90-day period and there was 285 sellers it went from like 25 or 30 sellers overnight to 285 you know uh, the big boxes released their clearance and the reseller scooped it up uh, that being said overnight there was a huge bidding war I slept through it and I woke up to find what was supposed to be a very profitable item, basically worthless. And that happened around Christmas time. Uh, just on, uh, on the January side, on the 2022 side, 
of it. It was what didn't sell for Christmas they were getting rid of, and I picked it up. Long story short, what are we, July now? Basically six solid months since then. And uh, it's gone from uh, the 200 plus uh, sellers to about 150. And now that price is creeping back up. Uh, I, uh, although there are still some people at, at 50, $60, because there's so many and the cycle that it takes, uh, most people are, are 90 to to $100 on this item, uh, making it worthwhile. I believe uh, for 40, and I may have said it wrong with 35, but anyway, I remember uh, mentioning buying it at 40, that at 90, I made 10. So maybe, maybe that, that's all true, somewhere in there. It's been a while since I've done the math, and matter of fact, shipping rates have gone up, so I, probably need to take a look. Long story short, uh, there's a, a very critical moment and I'm not sure if the conversation I'm fixing to have has already uh, hit the cutting room floor so to speak as far as in previous videos uh, but selling uh, during, oh, uh, during that recession video I do believe I spoke about uh, selling out of desperation or um, uh, or whatnot, you know. I, I'm going to be point blank, you know. If the money that you have to flip with is not something that you can let loose of, then retail arbitrage, and, and I say let loose of for an indefinite period of time. If you cannot do that then, uh, huh, I'm passing Anna, that's cool. Uh, anyway, if you can't just bury that money for a while, then retail arbitrage probably isn't for you. You know, I have held on to those eight items that I bought for $40 a piece, it's 320 bucks, not a lot of money, but in the grand scheme of things, I remember first starting out uh, how, how much uh, money like that could mean to me. You know, I wasn't sure if this thing would work at all, and I put very little money into this. I, with my corporate structure and everything, about three thousand uh, dollars. That that being said, um, there are more stable markets, and I say markets, uh, modes of doing the exact same thing that I do. Th that isn't retail arbitrage. Uh, the the main one that comes to mind is thrift arbitrage. And when I say thrift, I mean garage sales, thrift stores, uh, Facebook marketplace, uh, things of that nature. Because, and I, just to use an example, and I don't mean this example is profitable. However, what I'm saying is, you know, if there is a market for a 1982 Easy Bank oven, and you come across a 1982 Easy Bake Oven, chances are the stores aren't gonna let thousands of those go nationwide overnight. You see what I'm saying? So, uh, and I don't know that there's any money in 1982 Easy Bake Ovens. Uh, there very well may be, I just don't know. Uh, what I am saying is when you come uh, across things in the wild, so to speak, uh, on thrift arbitrage, you can um, pretty well rest assured at what the value of it is going to be tomorrow, the next day, and thereafter. So those comps, uh, in some ways, are um, more uh, stable. Whereas with thrift arbitrage, those comps can be very static. Um, you know, it doesn't mean they're going to be there one day to the next. Now that being said, you know, uh, generally, if a uh, item bought in retail arbitrage has value to it, regardless of the supply and demand rule, uh, time will win out. Uh, for instance, right after Christmas, I bought 12 of these uh, perfume sets by uh, uh, 
Uh, it was the Share Decades Collection. I uh, got them super cheap, heck of a good deal. Uh, and overnight, those things went from, oh, and, and if I'm not mistaken, it said something like, uh, uh, what was it, uh, $39.99 value on it. They were selling before the clearance let out upwards of $60 for a thing that said $39.99 value right on top of it. Uh, and and the, the nerve of people, God bless them, they, they, even, they even put it on there. But that being said, supply and demand does win out in that situation. If the demand is great enough, then the supply is uh, little enough, people will pay what they believe it's worth. And, and I'm, uh, uh, I'm no one to say any different, you know. Uh, that's how bubblegum baseball cards uh, have sold for millions. It's not up to me to assign the value. The value is determined by the uh, biggest amount that somebody's willing to pay or the least amount that somebody's willing to take. Uh, so long story short, with the Shared Decades Collection, uh, I bought it about the same time as I did that other, and it was uh, probably April or May. I held that stuff for three or four months, uh, and, and uh, I don't know if I ever said what, to, what it went down to. Anyway, it had gone up to 60. I grabbed a hold of it, uh, and overnight they went to like 12 $13. Now bear in mind, it takes about $5 uh, to ship that plus fees, okay? Uh, so people were, uh, oh, 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 let me slow down before I get a ticket. Uh, there's a cop coming up. Uh, but anyways, uh, you know, people were basically taking a loss because there was so many people on the listings and uh, people had to get their money out, whatever they could, just to get out from underneath it, you know? If I bought it for, let's just say 10, you know, if I can get five back and I gotta have it because rent's due and electric's due and the water bill's due, then that five's pretty important. Uh, meanwhile, they're selling a $60 item to get five dollars, to recoup five dollars of their initial investment, it's sad. Um, and I see it all the time. You know, I, like I said, I still have uh, that one that uh, was 260. Uh, I've seen it sell uh, fairly decent. Uh, it's still running about 10 to 12, uh, 10 to 12 uh, items a, uh, a month. And as Christmas goes on, it should heat up. It should become profitable again because enough time has passed, the supply and demand will be offset and, uh, and the item will become profitable again. Uh, that being said, with all this stuff, with uh, Target across the country releasing it, um, you never know what the supply and demand rules will do. You know, I have a lot of items that, um, that aren't selling because of it, you know. Uh, some things that I buy are directly uh, money. And then some of them are just money seeds. If I plant them in the ground, I hold on to them, I take care of them, I, I nurture them, then one day they, they, they might become money. Uh, and they often do. Matter of fact, I have very little, oh, I'm probably less than 5% that I'm actually taken a loss on and some of that stuff was just uh, things that had expiration dates uh, things like that uh, but that being said I, I'm not a storage either I'm, I run a store uh, I do run a time cadence and maybe that's uh, a subject for another video uh, but consider where you're at and decide whether or not uh, retail arbitrage is the right thing for you because if 
prices keep tanking. Uh, you know, I've heard some very seasoned resellers uh, talking about how uh, thrift arbitrage is hit or miss. Uh, I'm telling you, it's all hits if you wait long enough, if you can wait. But if you can't, I can see how I can swallow you up. Uh, at any rate, guys, it's been a fantastic day. It really has. And come this time next year, hopefully I'm not hanging on to too much of this. Uh, waiting on it to, uh, to become a profit. But I really think that uh, the vast majority of it uh, will uh, we'll sell within the next year, and that is totally acceptable with me. You know, I, I say I don't run a, uh, a storage. I have seen retailers hold on to things for one to two years without a sale, and, and they're a store too. So I don't mean things on that fly off the shelves. In retail arbitrage, you can't you can't depend on that. Uh, I hear some people say that they. Uh, only hold on to things for a couple months and that way they get their money out so they can buy something else but uh, that's uh, that's not my strategy as long as it remains profitable I'm gonna hang on to it uh, that's about all I got guys I'll listen to the video and uh, hopefully uh, go from there. <laughs> I hope y'all are doing great, guys. Thanks for tuning in. If you made it this long, I really do appreciate it. Uh, anyway, uh, good luck. Let me know uh, how things are going with y'all. I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Uh, please like, share, subscribe. Subscribe's the big one. Uh, I'm super new at this. This is only, I believe, video eight. So, uh, I, uh, I keep bringing these uh, to y'all, I keep working on getting better, and I, uh, I do believe in all honesty, I have noticed the one thing that I believe that will uh, help these videos more than anything is for y'all to, uh, for me to display and show uh, the excitement that I have for this business uh, a little bit more clearly. Some of the videos seem to be, uh, to me, and I'm my biggest critic, a little on the monotone side, and that is uh, not what I feel inside. Uh, reselling is a uh, super cool deal. Uh, my wife thinks it might be a, a, a bit of an addiction, uh, which is possible. I, I've been known to have an addictive personality. Uh, I'm just glad now that uh, I directed towards shopping. <laughs> See y'all later. Bye.